Tell me, what is your why? I still love to compete, really. I think to have the opportunity to play in great arenas against great teams, with great players, with great teammates, and be able to fight for titles, I think it's, there's nothing better in sport. And, um, and this is why I'm still doing it. You've had a chance to play, you know, represent your country, play in the NBA, play for some historic yearly franchises. Has your why changed at all throughout that process? Uh, my why didn't change through my process because another of my whys is to be the better, the best basketball player as, as I could be and to find a better environment for me. Um, so that's why I made the choice to come back uh, in Europe with Fenerbahce, uh, a powerhouse in Europe, and to come back to Milano, another powerhouse, and to, as I said before, chase titles, and to be able to compete and um, have a, a position to help the team in, in uh, reaching the title. So uh, that's why it never, never changed. As you mentioned, coming back to Europe, do you feel any additional pressure playing in your native country and one of the biggest you know, cities in Europe? You know. I always also chase pressure because I think pressure makes you become a better basketball player and um, you know, gives you also those, those emotions that are tough to reach outside the basketball court. Um, I love responsibilities. Uh, I love to be able uh, to be in the stage where you play on a high level and you cannot do that without pressure. So um, uh, I say that I like it. I always chase, chase it. And um, it's, it's another of those things that really make you go to the gym every day to work hard because it's, it's not easy and you need uh, really the best from you to, to reach those goals. What are some of the hardest things you've had to deal with in your career in regards to like, you know, the things you've sacrificed to, to be great, to mm -hmm. be as good as you are? Time in the gym. Um, if I um, look at my my past, there is a lot, a lot of summers in the gym, and um, I don't want to say missed opportunities because being in the gym gave me way more opportunities. But you know, uh, you are at a certain age. You are a teenager. You are 20 or 25 only for a specific moment of your life, and uh, of course, I couldn't do everything, um, but I made, I made a decision. And of course, that was the best thing for me. And that was the best part of my life. Uh, so of course, I don't regret it. But I missed a lot of uh, childhood, a lot of uh, moments of the court. Um, but you know, uh, in every when you make a decision, you, you lose always something. And one more time, I'm more than happy that of all the hours that I spent in the gym. That's amazing. So, like, tell us, what has what the game given you? Beyond the financial perspective, of course, but, like, what has what the game provided for you? Uh, really, the, the game, basketball, uh, has been my life for the last 30 plus years. Uh, really, it's tough to, to imagine my, my life without basketball. It uh, gave me goals, it gave me joy, it gave me sadness sometimes gave me frustration at times, but you know, this is life. And uh, I think the biggest thing that basketball gave me and the game gave me is um, teaching moments every day. Um, and that made me grow not only, everybody say not only as a basketball player, but also as a human being. And uh, that's why I'm very grateful that I, um, uh, that my life really was connected with the sport and specifically basketball. I mean, speaking to that, you know, you left Sardinia at a very early age to, you know, join EuroLeague. I mean, in the States, you know, leaving your home at 15 is, it's not, it's not common, you know, but in Europe, I've, as I've done these interviews, it seems to be more common. So just tell me about that process, you know, to, to make the decision to leave your home at 15 um, to pursue your dreams. At that time, when I was 15, um, I was one of the best um, in Europe for my age. Uh, so it was the moment to understand if the basketball life, the pro life, um, was something that I really wanted to do. And uh, so the, the impact was tough because, you know, uh, from 
playing basketball with your friends and then playing with basketball with a pro, so be treated as a pro and uh, expected to perform as a pro also sometimes. Uh, it was hard at the beginning, but it was a good test to, to understand if I could fit in this world. And uh, really, I, uh, it gave me a lot of motivation, a lot of goals to reach, and um, a lot of excitement, a lot of joy. So really, from the first year, I knew that it was not go going to be easy, of course, but I knew that it was going to be fun. So uh, I embraced the, the choice. Yeah, from there, you had a chance to go play in Rome, one of the most historic cities in, in all the world. Like, to speak about how that impacted you as a person, and then obviously you. We'll get to later to the NBA and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. How did how did playing in Rome impact you as a? Uh, I couldn't go to the NBA if it was not because of Rome, because Rome was the city and the club that um, gave me a lot of trust and a lot of possibility to grow. I spent there five years from 20 to 25, so that's a crucial age uh, to understand which kind of players I could uh, be and become. Uh, in Rome, I felt responsibilities for the very first time, and I had the freedom to express myself on the court. And the city is just amazing, really. And um, to be able to play basketball there in the free time, enjoy the city, was uh, really speechless. Uh, that's why that's another motivation. That's why I feel so lucky now. Um, but re really, without Rome, uh, I would have gone to NBA and uh, then to Fener and to Milano. So Rome was really the key club and city uh, through my career. Okay, yeah. And as you mentioned, how Roma was able to um, support or allow you to get to the NBA based upon the level of uh, trust they had in you as a player. Tell us a little bit about how that NBA journey came about and also things that you learned and how it changed you as a man and as a person and as well as a player. Mm -hmm. um, the NBA opportunity came uh, my last year when I was in Rome in 2013. So a lot of people told me, is it, is it the good moment to go? And they say uh, that was the moment, that was the opportunity, uh, two years deal and uh, the opportunity to go there and uh, every opportunity to see if I belong to that level. Uh, I felt ready. Maybe I was not ready, but I felt ready. And uh, again, I embraced the, um, the challenge. Uh, again, to be there, I knew that it was, going, was not going to be easy, but I knew it was going to be fun and uh, exciting. And uh, it taught me a lot. It taught me how to be mental... Re uh, mental um, it's important to be mentally tough sometimes when you don't see the core for um, a lot of games, weeks, months, and then they call your name, you gotta perform. Means that you have to put a lot of work in when you're alone, when nobody sees you, to be ready in that moment. Uh, the opportunity finally came in Boston, my second season in NBA, and I was glad that came, and I was uh, proud of myself because I, I put a lot of work to be ready in that moment. I took the opportunity, and uh, that's why, of course, I have better memories in Boston, but also I feel grateful to Detroit that gave me the opportunity. What kind of advice would you give to the younger Italian players coming up and how they can be mm -hmm. more ready? It's tough because every player is different and every journey is different. Uh, but I, I think when you have the opportunity, you need to be ready to embrace a new culture and a new way of seeing basketball. Uh, because unless you are that talented and that good that you're going to find your position, for most of the players, I think it's a way, uh, it's a matter of being uh, fitable in a certain team. And um, of course, you need to be physically ready, mentally ready, and skill level ready, but also to understand that we come from a different culture, not saying that it's better or worse. Uh, just different and you need to embrace a new culture and you need to adapt to a new system and um, be ready for that be humble enough to start from zero again also if uh, you are coming from a decent pretty good career overseas yeah so after the nba you you know made a decision to come back to europe um tell us a little bit about like the decision to play in Fenerbahce and you know the coach wanting you and and how that all came about uh, at that time, I was uh, thrilled also to see if there were still opportunities over, uh, in the league. Uh, there were few opportunities, but I didn't see crazy opportunities to stay there. 
And uh, in Europe, there were big opportunities to play for powerhouses in Europe and to chase titles, as I said before. And in that moment, I never won anything in my career. Uh, so when Fenerbahce called me and Obradovic, of course, and uh, Gerardini, uh, the, the team was pretty good already. I, I saw myself very good in that situation, uh, but I didn't know how 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 nice, nice would have been uh, those years. Uh, I was, of course, excited to, to play to another level, a uh, high Euro level that I never played before. Uh, but really, I embraced the culture over there, and uh, I love the experience, I love the club, I love the city, the country. So um, really, um, I didn't know that moment, but I made uh, one of the best decisions of my life. Yeah, not a lot of people can say they've, they've had a chance to call themselves a champion. Um, you had a tough defeat in 2016, but you followed up mm-hmm. with winning it. How, how much sweeter was winning it in 17, given that you lost in 16? You know, in sport, is, um, there are a lot of emotions, of for, sure, of for sure excitement, but also sometimes uh, sadness and frustration. And for sure, that final loss... Uh, was hard to digest, and um, but you know uh, when you have the feeling that you can, uh, you belong to that level, and you have everything to compete at that level. You want to be back in the stage and try to to win it again. And it happened that it was the the year after with the same core of guys. Uh, of course, I would rather have won both or maybe three <laughs> of those finals, but winning after a lost title is. Um, Yes, it made it sweeter. It made it sweeter because uh, nothing is easy in sport and uh, we learned it very good with, the, with that final loss. After spending so much time apart from your first introduction to, to EuroLeague, to going to, to Roma, to going to the NBA, to going to Fenerbahce, coming back to Milan, like, what was your thought process behind coming back home, you know, or at least, your, you know, come back to Italy to play? Was it something that was like a... I hope you're not done. I hope you got some more years left. But was that something that had some that had something to do with it? Um, in, in that moment, if, uh, it was 2020, and I felt that um, I did a lot for that uh, organization and um, with with that group of guys that year by year were um, leaving uh, Fenerbahce. Uh, we won everything Turkey. Uh, we won uh, the Euroleague uh, Final Four every year. So I felt that. Um, I did what I had to do. Uh, and then I also I always dreamed and pictured myself winning titles when I, with an Italian team. And I knew that that was a good opportunity for me to come back because um, maybe not uh, st- uh, already I was not in my prime, but I was still uh, at an age that I could help. And so Milano is, was an uh, incredible uh, organization. It's an uh, incredible organization. Uh, Messina, great players again. Uh, so I could see myself um, ready for another challenge because also, as I mentioned many times, challenges for us are so, so important. And uh, in Fener, I felt that uh, I achieved a lot. So I was willing for more challenges. And uh, to come in Milano and bring Milano to a uh, elite level in Europe and win titles in Italy was a big challenge. And um, that's why I, I thought it was a good moment for me to come back. A lot of people who follow you, understand you a little bit, understand that you're interested in art and music in particular. So uh, what attracts you What attracts you to like rock and pop music? Mm-hmm. Are you are you in sync or Bachelor no, Boys? Uh, I, I, I love for sure rock, uh, what comes from rock and roll, punk, uh, um, the 70s, let's say, uh, especially in New York. The new, the new wave in those years in New York were um, my piece of cake, let's say. Uh, but really now I'm listening to everything that gives me um, good feelings. Also um, classic music, if I'm the mood. Uh, um, at, least, at least a little bit of everything, but for sure rock, um, it's, my, it's my favorite. Um, let's talk about Patti Smith. You know, you had a chance to play guitar. Her, like, how did that happen? What happened? How did that come to be? Um, I was in touch from a couple of years with uh, Patti's daughter, Jessie. Uh, she's an activist, and I, um, we did something together with social media. Uh, so I, want, I wanted just to see Patti live. I, I watched her 
I saw it when I was in Barcelona in 2015 for the Primavera Sound, and uh, then a lot of things happened. I was in the States, I was in Turkey, and um, COVID happened. The first time that I was able to watch her, to see her at the concert, it was this summer um, that she was coming to Milano. So I thought that I was willing to, to see the concert and it had ended up that she invited me for dinner. I was in the backstage and she invited me playing guitar on the stage. So it was uh, more than expected, but uh, for sure a beautiful night and a night that I will never uh, forget. So that's why I'm very I'm grateful to all the uh, uh, Patty and Jesse's family. Also Jackson was, uh, um, Patty's son was a guitarist. So all the family, they're not great musicians, but also great people. So so human, so kind, so gentle that they really they made me feel a part of the band. So uh, I'm really grateful to, uh, for them. Final Four, your league, <laughs> or playing guitar for so many people. Which which one? I don't know. I want to say anxiety or nervousness or pressure. But which one was? I I thought about it because they told me was was it better being the court or on the stage. I think it's different because, of course, my job is basketball. When you go on the court, there is a lot of also responsibilities, a lot of work behind. And, um, of course, I try to do as serious as possible. And um, with Patty on the stage was that just enjoying the moment and was just pure joy and pure, uh, um, really, uh, being grateful to be there. Uh, two different kind of joy. Um, but I still rather basketball, so my career music has to wait. To wait, okay. I'll keep that in mind going forward. Um, then we have to transition to J.K. Rowling. Like, mm. you know, how did I mean? Like, how do you just connect with these phenomenal, like, you know, icons of, of history mm. like that? Uh, it's a lot of uh, combined um, cases uh, and opportunities. I think. I took the best out of social media. There is a lot of uh, bad things on social media. These things are good, I think, connecting people. Uh, I said a story about Patty and with JK up and that uh, after a um, game with Fenerbahce, uh, some fans throw some coins in, uh, in the derby with the Galatasaray. And um, I had a little cut, really little, but the shape of the blood was really exactly the scar of Harry Potter. So they took a picture of me and uh, I try to take fun of myself also and of the moment say, okay, uh, happened something that you never want to see, a player being hit from a coin on the, from the crowd, but let's take the opportunity to tag uh, J.K. Rowling and uh, maybe she's going to see me. And a lot of Fenerbahce fans, because the fan base in Fener is unbelievable, and they tag they take J.K. Rowling, so she actually saw the tweet, she followed me, she answered, she said that you, you don't need to, to have a real cut to meet her and uh, she was very kind again we exchanged a couple messages and um, it was a good uh, moment too you seem to be very diverse in the things you do you you know play guitar you know you hang out with novelists <laughs> you are a national team player all these things how important is it for up and coming athletes to have off-court hobbies and you know things that kind of like you know de detach themselves from the stress and the the rigmarole of practicing twice a day, games, three, two or three games a week, things of that nature. Oh, exactly. I feel uh, that, um, to me at least, I um, have different things to, to do or to think about, help you in, uh, have a better vision of everything. Um, okay, it takes uh, maybe the stress out sometimes, but also give you the point of view of different people, uh, people from uh, outside your world, from outside from basketball. Um, I think it's just, it's just a good opportunity to open the mind, to open the mind and being uh, a better person. Uh, I'm not a huge uh, um, art guy or reader or guitarist, but I'm, I like to know a little bit of something that attracts me. Um, so it has been, uh, you know, simply live the life better. All right, last question. Um, when it's all said and done and you're no longer playing, what do you want people to remember you by as a person, as, as a player? Hmm. Uh, good question. I, um, I would like that whoever um, had the opportunity to stay, spend time with me, teammates, uh, people in the club have a good memory about me, uh, regardless of the basketball player, just as a human being. And I hope the fans, uh, had a, <laughs> of course, have a good memory about me as a player. 
Um, but really, um, us as players, we have this famous platform that we, we can use. And I hope that I, um, maybe people will remember also messages outside of basketball that I think are important. And um, I hope they're gonna just leave a good uh, memory on the court and uh, offside, offside the court. I'm Gigi Datome, and this is my why.